Tom Little's here, Liverpool fan, Man United, signed Ericsson. What are you saying, my friend? That's a really sm- I'm a little bit concerned. It's a really smart sign in that. That is a really smart that's not my, that's not what Manchester United do. Manchester United don't make smart signings. You just go and give three hundred K a week to finish players. This this isn't right. It's so it's actually a really smart sign in, in the sense that the you'll you'll obviously got a style of play that you're gonna need to implement. And I think most United fans aren't really as bothered about what's gonna happen next season in terms of challenging for the major honours as just trying to get a style of play and trying to figure out where you're going under Eric Ten Hag. So getting a player who understands that Ten Hag style of play, can drop into that Ten Hag style of play effortlessly. He's experienced, he's played in the league before, he was fantastic at Brentford last year. So the concerns about what might happen after being out the league, they, they're they not there. He's obviously still got it in this league. He's an experienced head to help. The, the development since this next phase, and obviously there's the whole carry on about Ronaldo and what's gone on there. But I think what you've got to appreciate is this is a really, if you get Ericsson, if you get Frankie De Jong in, like you look set to do, that's your midfield set, in my opinion. You know, Ericsson, De Jong, Bruno, and then you've got Fred and McTominay, who, let's be honest, they're not going anywhere. So so they're just there as backups. But you've got a solid core to that midfield. Ericsson is just a really, really good pick up. And it's a bit annoying because I did want him to stay at Brentford, so you couldn't have him. Because it, it, it's annoying. It's annoying that Ten Hogs getting those players because you just can act, if it, if this carries on, you just can really create something. You just can really create something because Ten Hogs a brilliant manager, and he's got a brilliant style of play. And if he can get it implemented, top four next year. Listen, I, I think Man United, I've said it, you know me, I've been consistent this whole time. I think Man United can make the top four. We've got a better squad than people already understand. Two signings in. If we can pull off Lissandro this week, and listen, Arsenal have got a very good chance of getting that deal done. And you bring in De Jong. I know that the, 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 the Ronaldo thing is frying people's heads out of, of loop. I'm not worried about Ronaldo. At the end of next season, he's also not going to be here. So you're in this situation where the club may need to go, right, well, who are we going to... Is there going to be an emergence of a striker in the next 12 months who no one knows about now? Probably not. Like, very, very rarely does it happen when you get... Like when Haaland kind of came through, that happens every once every four or five, six years. You get a player that you didn't expect to be brilliant that is. So there's obviously targets out there for next year. Do we move to one of them now? Or do we say, do you know what? Let's save £26 million by letting Ronaldo go and let's invest that in another centre-back. Let's, let's invest that in another midfielder. We've got Martial, Rashford, Bruno that can play a false nine position. We've got some academy. You know, we, we'll be short in that area. But we'll tackle that next year. This is year one of a rebuild. And mm-hmm. look, I just think people need to uh, re- relax a little bit in relation to this. They really, really do. But of yes. course, no, Man United fans didn't want to relax. Man United fans wanted to pretend to be outraged. They were every day. Literally, I saw, I saw a Man United fan, a big Man United fan, tweet earlier on today. Man United summer's in chaos. We've just signed Malassia and Christian Eriksen for £13 million in its entirety and are closing in on one of the best up-and-coming centre-backs in the world in Lissandro Martinez. And suddenly we're in a mess. The, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the fake outrage is out is outrageous. This is the thing. Like, you, you've obviously, everyone can see you've got so many issue areas that you've got to address. Striker, your right wing, because you haven't got a right winger. You play Sancho on the left. You know, I still think you need a better right back than what you've got. And you'll eventually have to address your goalkeeper. But you're not going to do that all in one window with the type of player that Ten Hag wants. This is the issue. This is the issue with, with what you need to do. Ten Hag is wanting players that fit his system. This isn't a situation where you just go out and buy anyone who is world-class. You need certain types of players. So if you've got to wait a year to get that certain type of player, you wait a year. Because what we've we done it with Van Dijk and Allison. Um, City have done it before. The top clubs do it because you need a certain type of player. If Ronaldo was to go this summer, I wouldn't be shocked if he didn't buy anyone and he's just used what you had in the squad because he's not going to go out and spend £50 million on someone who doesn't fit his system. He's clearly got something that he wants to implement and he's not going to set that back by bringing in a big name who, yes, he's going to sell me X amount of shirts, but on the pitch, there isn't that impact. So, Yes, you need a striker, but the striker market is horrific this window. It is horrific. The two best strikers went in like the first two weeks in Haaland and Nunes. Nunes was the one used for after. Obviously, he's gone. 
Ten Hag doesn't want anyone else that's currently available. So why would he go out and buy someone he doesn't want? This is mm. the thing. If if you want this Ten Hag project to work, you have to give him the trust in the transfer market. You have to let him decide who he wants. Because at the end of the day, he's the one that's got to use them. He's the one that's got to get a tune out of them. Yeah. So if if he's the one making the decisions, at least it's just only on him if it goes wrong. And there's only one point of blame. So I, I just yeah. I think that's what you gotta do. Mate, I, look, I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more. And I think United fans have all, all I've said all along have just got to remain a little bit more relaxed than, than than they have been. And I get the frustration, I get the concern, I get the worry, but stay relaxed. Tom, thanks for coming on, mate, and having your say.